gondolas. You hear the name Venice or even Italy and this is immediately what you think of. These iconic boats have been around for centuries, nearly since this crazy city of islands was formed. Why have writers and movie directors gravitated towards Venice as their setting of choice? Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice, to the Italian job, and even the recent Spider-Man film all share the backdrop of the city's bridges and canals. This was the place to be. I mean, the Grand Canal was like the Fifth Avenue of New York. But this cinematic and culturally iconic city is on the brink of extinction. When I was a child in school, it was in the 70s, the average of a giant tide was like three, four in the okay. winter time. And now you can have even 10, 12. Wow. Here. Not just from rising sea levels, but from a disappearance of the time-honored trades and local color. What is happening to the art forms that have long called Venice home, and what can we do to save these trades before they're gone for good? Learning a skill that resembles the craft of a concert violin maker takes time, practice, and dedication. Our instant gratification world has a hard time grasping this idea. The violin maker, the potter, the welder have all spent years mastering their crafts, learning the ins and outs that can only be learned by experience and tradition. So why are people not pursuing these careers? In the case of Venice's gondola makers, it's a tale of what happens when global warming, economics, and tourism overrun a group of islands the size of Manhattan, all without skyscrapers and roads, this was a marsh. A marsh, um, really? A marsh. Um, wow. Spotted were from Monday Island. But at its core, it's a tale all too familiar in the world. A misconception of and an underappreciation for what a trade is. There are today roughly 430 gondolas in town. Right. There were 10,000 gondolas. Oh my gosh. At the time of the Republic in the 1700s. Wow, that's crazy. Everybody in Venice, especially the aristocrats, had their own gondola and uh, it was like the limousine of right. the time. In large part, it's the gondolas themselves that draw people to Venice. I even somehow fell into paying hundreds of dollars to be chauffeured by a striped-shirted gondolier with his signature hat. I did resist the urge to spring for a violinist. These boats have been around for centuries. In fact, the first mention of them is before 1094. Each gondola is unique, taking 12 months to construct. The boat is 32 feet or 11 meters long. It originally had a cabin for cold days and to hide nobility. It wasn't until 1562, the city decreed they all had to be black. Before, drivers tried to outdo each other with crazy over-the-top colors and decorations. Black was chosen so they would blend in more with the color of the lagoon. All gold leaf is real. The front is called the bow iron. These six metal lines represent the six sistieri or districts of Venice. Training to drive takes over 400 hours and drivers have to pay up front for their boat, which costs around $28,000. Perhaps why only three to four gondoliers earn their license each year. And yet, we rarely think to ourselves who made the boat we're floating on. There are 433 gondolieri, 433 gondole a Venezia. To save the boats, we have to ask ourselves that question and then redefine what creating gondolas from scratch by hand really is, a centuries-old art form. I headed to the Squero, or boatyard, which happens to be one of the oldest in Venice, dating back to the 17th century. This is one of only three workshops left where gondolas are constructed and repaired. Qui vengono appoggiate le costole, l'ossatura, vedete? E su questa vengono messe le due tavole del fianco. È una tavola unica di rovere di 12 metri che serve. È un pezzo unico. Per cui tutte le parti, le strutture portanti sono in rovere. I trasti, che sono queste parti trasversali, sono fatti di ciliegio. 
l'ossatura, le, le costole sono fatte di olmo. Allora qui viene fatta la prima parte della gondola che è asimmetrica. Questo fianco è più lungo, quello è più corto. Per cui il gondoliere è uno che voga sempre sulla destra. La barca quando viene messa in acqua tende a cadere verso destra. Il gondoliere con il remo la spinge verso sinistra per cui questa forma particolare asimmetrica serve per bilanciare la spinta che manca nell'altro fianco per poter essere guidata con un solo remo. Ogni gondola viene curvata un po' di più, un po' meno a seconda della taglia del gondoliere. Viene fatta su ordinazione. Una volta era pece, adesso si usa smalto da legno, è tutto fatto a mano, il pennello. Per fare una barca nuova richiede 8-10 strati di smalto per renderla lucida. As the world collectively decides what success looks like, they put a monetary value on each profession. Tutti un po' i lavori artigianali stanno scomparendo, siamo rimasti ben in pochi. E purtroppo adesso vediamo, c'è mio figlio che dovrebbe imparare, speriamo che, che segua. Però siamo rimasti proprio in pochi. The trades have taken a back seat recently. The intricate gondolas of centuries past are soon to be manufactured in factories, just like the handmade blown glass ornaments, custom cabinetry, Venetian masks, and countless other artisanal products before them. This is fascinating. Thank you for your time. And uh, to me, you're, you're an artist. It's amazing. It needs to be preserved. Do we really value art and artisans? Our actions speak louder than our words. What can we shift in our own mindsets and practices that might save trades like this that are on the brink of extinction? The art of gondola making is like none other. Let's do whatever it takes to keep it around. <laughs>